I'm Ranger Allen, one of the park interpreters here at Dinosaur Valley State Park. And my job is to go out and actually help the public understand more of the cultural, historical, and resources here at Dinosaur Valley. So back in May, speaking of the river flooding and stuff, floods actually destroy our dinosaur tracks. They're ultimately rock, they're not gonna be around forever, right? The river right now that y'all walk across when you got over here is about two feet. That's the average river depth right now. Back in May, with all that rain we got where it felt like it rained the entire month, this river peaked at just about 11 and a half to 12 feet high. So with that, when it floods that much and there's that much water moving so fast in this area, it speeds up the process of erosion and weathering in our track sites and we start to lose our tracks. But the good part, is that underneath where y'all are standing, it's gonna expose those tracks that have never been seen before at a faster rate. Where you're sitting and standing right now, you'll notice you're about two feet higher than the tracks themselves. Underneath your feet, two feet down, there are dinosaur tracks that no one has ever seen before because they're still buried to this day. The reason we know that to be true, this Acrocanthosaurus track all the way over here. 10 years ago, the track wasn't there. It wasn't visible. It was still buried. But over the last 10 years, as the river floods and water comes over the top of this cliffside and actually carves out the front side of this track site, it pushed that rock shelf back two feet to expose that track. Which means there's more underneath here that just have, we have never seen before. So we just have to wait for the river to expose those tracks, and that's the exciting part. Researcher came down here from New York City called R.T. Bird, Roland T. Bird. And he was the one that discovered Sora Poseidon. Now, this dinosaur is a little bit different. I'm going to ask you all the same question as I did earlier. But this one's different because now you are the first person in the entire world to discover this. No one else knows about it except for you. What would you do with those dinosaur tracks? Museum? Absolutely. Preserve it. Protect it. Anybody else? Keep it. Keep it here? No. Oh, just keep it for yourself? <laughs> I, yeah, absolutely. The best thing happens. The Texas Parks and Wildlife bought the lands. Now they only bought 330 acres, which is all they needed to protect the dinosaur tracks and what we call the south side, which is the parking lots, the roads, and the headquarters. That's the south side of the river. The north side, where all our hiking trails are, wasn't ours. We didn't own it yet. Now, when they build a new state park, I mean, there's a couple things that the agency does. First and foremost, you got to give it a name. In order to care for something, you have to name it. So, our name came by pretty easy compared to others. Dinosaur Tracks, Dinosaur. Pretty simple. But Dinosaur State Park's not enough. They wanted something else. What they had looked at is they started to expand the park boundary just a little bit more. They bought some land on the other side. They expanded it to the top of the overlook. And from up there, you can see the entire valley that we sit in and the way the river flows through the valley. So Valley was a really good dinosaur valley state park. That'd be a fantastic new name for a Texas state park. And here we are. 1969, we became an official state park in the state of Texas. And in 1972, we opened our doors to the public forever. Now there's something special about 1972. Next year, 2022, is our 50th anniversary as a state park open to the public. 50 years we've been open as a state park protecting hundreds to thousands of dinosaur tracks, prairie, river, and forest ecosystem. Now we not only protect the original 330 acres, but now more than 1,700 acres in this park. Over 20 miles of hiking and biking trails, primitive camping, all because one person made a discovery right here that changed the world. And we now have one of the top 10 Texas state parks in our agency in terms of visitation each year. So the tracks that they actually dug out, they really only removed about maybe 10 to 15 percent of what we actually have still here in the park. So they didn't remove a lot. Um, what it actually does, it actually benefited us um, because what it showed us is that here at Donisar Valley we not only protect the natural resources, the cultural resources, but the historical as well. 
And so those large holes out there being the historical side, um, even though they're no longer tracks and the tracks are not there from those excavation sites, it's still an important part of the history on how the park was actually built up around the foundation of the discovery of the tracks and how that led into a 60 year battle to make this a state park. So it's, we say it's a benefit in the long run just because it did help with making this a state park. This was actually a coastal ocean. The Gulf of Mexico was the ocean that came all the way up to here. And so we sit on the edge of that coastline and they really thrived in that environment. They had the large ocean water that they could go out and hang out in. Um, and then they had the muddy shoreline. They had the swampy forest behind us and they thrived. Um, so a lot of these plants here may or may not have been around back then as much, um, but because there's so much vegetation here, they really enjoyed it. And so for them, when they walked around, just the combination of the ocean, the muddy shoreline and the swampy forest, they really enjoyed that, that we know of so far. But we're still learning new things about the environment, the dinosaurs, all that kind of stuff as well. We learn new things each day. See those three toe tracks is Acrocanthosaurus. Um, that's a 10 to 15 foot tall, seven ton carnivore that walked around. That was the apex predator. He was the top of the food chain back then as well. Um, the other one, we're gonna look at, here's a back foot right here, another back foot and a front foot. And those tracks belong to Sora Poseidon, which is a 60 foot tall, 44 ton herbivore. Both of these dinosaurs, the relationship between the two would be very similar to like the T-Rex and Brontosaurus models that you saw when you came into the park.